Welcome to the Weekly Bull, the broadcast that helps to inform you as a student and a New Yorker in only a few minutes. Now to our newsroom on campus at the King's College. Last Saturday, NBC's illustrious nightly news anchor Brian Williams announced that he would be deserting the desk while he addresses the backlash surrounding a recent blunder. Earlier this month, Williams retracted previous statements he had made regarding his experience covering the American invasion of Iraq. The Emmy-winning anchor confessed to overstating a report about a helicopter that came under enemy fire. Williams' initial report claimed the vessel to be his own, when in fact it was the aircraft in front of him. So far, the public response has been something like, we don't believe you. This was not the first time Williams has been caught embellishing the truth. Back in 2006, the reporter made fallacious claims in an interview regarding things he saw and experienced while reporting on Hurricane Katrina. NBC was awarded the Peabody Award in 2005 for their coverage of the storm. Williams has canceled his appearance on Letterman, which was scheduled for Thursday, February 12th. Dateline anchor Lester Holt has commandeered Williams' nightly news position during his indefinite leave. Michael Sheets will be filling in for him on Letterman. After the Ebola scare last October, millions of New Yorkers have expressed concern and distrust of the MTA subway systems. Fortunately, Ebola cannot be spread via secondhand contact. However, recent studies have found particles of anthrax and the bubonic plague lurking about on the seats and handles of our daily commutes. Notably enough, many of the 15,000 microscopic organisms found in this study are actually harmless and, better yet, helpful in eliminating toxins in the subway. The study went on to reveal the most common meals and snacks that are eaten on the train. Cucumbers and chickpeas are among the top choices of subway food. And now for the top five OATKC posts of the week. A professor, I may work on Wall Street, but I can't afford markers. An upperclassman, freshmen are like little superhumans. It's kind of obnoxious. What happened to us? A professor, it's the three F's of evolutionary biology, fighting, feeding, and reproduction. Student, but one of those is an R. A professor, St. Augustine had a wild college life, drinking and partying. I guess college life wasn't that different back then. Yeah, well, hangover or no, Augustine still got up the next morning and read Hortensius. And finally, I heard Tubbs teaches Pilates in the village. Sign me up, homie. On the heels of Obama's controversial proposal to make community college free, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo revealed his new education plan. One of the key features is loan forgiveness. Individuals making under $50,000 who attend, graduate, and stay in New York are eligible to have their first two years of debt forgiven. Cuomo's proposal is unique because it will help students who are recent graduates. It will also help students in every line of work, not just select fields such as teaching. Opponents criticize the fact that the legislation will only give aid to graduates, leaving dropouts without any financial assistance. Senior fellow at the Urban Institute, Sandy Baum, said, it's good that they want to help college students, but they need to think more carefully about the best way to do it. However, many students are thrilled by the steps Cuomo is taking. One graduate commented, he wished that the plan had been in place earlier, as it would have provided him with safety and security. The Phillips Journalism Institute is hiring a PhD in journalism to join the faculty at the King's College next fall. Last Friday, Professor Paul Gladder and senior fellow Terry Mattingly showed candidate Greg Perot around the King's campus. Perot earned his doctorate in journalism from the University of Missouri and presented a lecture to students and faculty. After the lecture, he sat down for lunch with the journalism program's faculty and members of the Empire State Tribune. The conversation provided a personal introduction to what Perot would be bringing to the King's College with topics ranging from the use of multimedia and journalism to Greg's own development as a journalist. The third week of February will play host to two notable events on campus, both on February the 20th. At noon in the City Room, Dr. Paul Marshall, a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute Center for Religious Freedom, will present a lecture on radical Islam and the media. At 5.30 in the Slazit, International Ventures will screen the film Central Park 5. Don't forget to follow the Empire State Tribune on Facebook and Twitter. Questions or comments? Tweet at the AST with the hashtag WeeklyBull. Signing off, I'm Michael Sheets. Thanks for bearing the bull.